So yeah, Epicurus, just uh, lay out your uh, case for anarchy, and we'll see if you get any takers. All right, to start out with, um, the whole animal industry is funded by government subsidies. And so without government subsidies, the animal industry as we know it now would collapse. Now, one might argue that without government, society would just fall into warlords and chaos, and I also have arguments against that. So, uh, wait, it's Sir talking? Sir, nobody can hear you. You're lighting up, but you're not making noise. Oh, sorry, sorry. My bad. Uh, I had my mic um, tuned down. So, basically, what kind of anarchism are you proposing? Are you like anarcho syndicalist or something? Well, if I were to say like anarcho syndicalism, or anarcho-capitalism or whatever, like I'm not trying to force a particular system onto people because that would be against the principles of anarchism for voluntary interaction. Um, well, then we're, we're coming to the problem of practicalities, right? Like how do you achieve anarchy is going to basically answer my question of what kind of anarchy are you proposing as a good anarchy, right? So in that manner, like if I were to say, you know, I'm an anarcho-syndicalist, I would say that, you know, all of the power should and to the factory workers, right? And they should organize in a way in which suits them the best. Now, the problem with, uh, uh, with, your, uh, with your position is that you're not giving me any means to, you know, achieve any, any particular system, right? So uh, I can't like argue against anarchy if I don't know what, what you mean by that. So, so could you like provide some some way of, you know, achieving this specific state? Uh, how do you how are you going to you know dismantle the government at whole? How are you going to fight against imperialism in the United States and you know in Europe and against China and things like that? So, so these kinds of political questions need to be answered before we go on to like criticizing anarchism um, from your point of view. Okay, so just to be clear, my position, the closest position to mine is anarcho-capitalism. And that doesn't mean that I want to force capitalism on people that don't want to be a part of capitalism. If they want to have their own commune and practice communism or whatever, then that's totally up to them. But anarcho-capitalism just means people acting for their own benefit and trading with others in a peaceful, cooperative way. And if they don't want to be a part of that, that's totally fine with the system. Okay. So the problem with anarcho-capitalism is that everyone who is not anarchist is going to say to you that uh, basically anarcho-capitalism is not anarchism. Why? Well, because anarcho in anarcho-whatever means that you're anti-hierarchy, right? So if you're against hierarchy in, you know, and not every type of anar uh, hierarchy, right? You're, where Anarchists are usually like focusing on some specific sorts or you know types of hierarchy, and then you get all of these different anarchist positions, right? But the problem with anarcho-capitalism is that you still have a capitalist uh, economy, and within the capitalist economy, you will always have some towards monopolization, towards overproduction, towards having a cons consumerist society right and as long as you have a consumer society you're going to have some sort of of, uh, of hierarchy which is not going to be um appreciable right so imagine if you were to sell opium or heroin or something like that right you can have a certain person which can have a certain scheme to get a lot of people hooked to heroin right and in that kind of position, can this just person will here? have enormous amount of power to control a lot of people. Now, what anarchists are against is this kind of power, because we essentially don't need heroin to survive. So we want to fight against these people who want to create a demand so that they could have this much of power, right? So what you need to do is explain how are you going to, as an anarchist, 
fight against these types of power uh, controlling, you know, freaks and min- military later on, and you know, how are we going to fight against this power? All right, let's, so let's start with one thing at a time. So the uh, statement that anarchy is anti-hierarchical uh, is one type of anarchy, I would say, and that is not oh, yeah, necessarily. Isn't starting right with Bakunin, with Kropotkin, uh, with all of these. Yeah, and that's not the type of anarchism that I am supporting here. And I can give you the definition that I. Yeah, sure, go ahead. But and just also, need to, like, uh, explain, the... like, like, how are you going to fight against monopolization, and how are you going to fight against uh, the things that we have in capitalism today? Because. That's the thing. If you don't fight them, you're just going to end up with, you know, the capitalism as it is today. Okay, so there's nothing in the definition of hierarchy that I see is necessarily coercive. Can you explain that? Yeah, so uh, the definition of hierarchy I'm using is the classification of a group of people according to ability or to social, um, economic, or professional standing. Well, then you're still going to have, like, super rich capitalists in anarcho-capitalism, which are going to be more able to do stuff, which is going to give them more power, which is, at the end, going to give them, you know, higher status and hierarchy. So my question is, how do you stop that that particular you know, mechanism? If you explain that, then you can have a case for anarcho-capitalism. If you don't, then you just have capitalism with extra steps. Okay, so I'll explain my uh, version of anarchism. No, I don't need you to explain the version of anarchism. I need you to explain to me how are you going to achieve this, right? Because generally in political theory, we're going to say, oh, I would like the world to look like this or that or whatever. But the thing is, how do you get from the state in which we are today to your utopia or dystopia or whatever, right? And how do you, how do you manage to keep it good, right? How do you manage to keep it in a way in which you're supposed to, right? Like I could say, well, I want, I want us all to like live, you know, for millions of years to come just like by sucking the fossil fuel, right? But, but we don't have enough fossil fuels to suck, so we need to, you know, change the way in which we get our energy, right? So those kinds of things are basically the, the, the fundamental problems with any type of political uh, debate, right? You need to explain how are we going to get from the state in which we are today to the state of utopia or dystopia that you're claiming is true, right? All right, so just to be clear about what I'm talking about when I say anarchism, I'm referring to the theory that all forms of government are oppressive and undesirable and should be abolished, not the opposition to hierarchy. Okay, so you're against government, right? But that's like communists are against government, uh, you know, all anarchists are almost against government. Communism is a form of government. No. What have you read from the communist... uh, uh, literature. Because that's not what communism is, right? Like okay, so there's you... there's two definitions for communism. One's an economic system and one's a type of government. All right. No, there, there's no type of government. Like, I don't know where you're getting these definitions from, but the point is that communism is a state, a state, not the state, uh, of affairs in which there is no government, right? And the theory behind it, like how do we get there, is we achieve it by setting up a di- direct dictatorship by the Communist Party, which is going to take over basically the whole world. And when it does that, it's going to disassemble itself into communism by, you know, um, changing the way that we generally operate uh, in production by reducing our need for consuming stuff. So consumerism needs to stop, and we can't stop consumerism without actually having set up the the dictatorship first, right? So 
communism comes after, you know, the socialism, which is going to be dictated by the people themselves through the Communist Party. So that's the, like the most basic communist theory we have. And that's from Karl Marx. Okay, well, we're here to uh, debate anarcho-capitalism anyway, so what would... Okay, so you want me to explain how we go from the society that we have now to an anarcho-capitalist okay. society, right? Do you have yourself turned down again? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Did you hear what I said? No, no, sorry, I didn't hear. I, I, uh, I, you asked the question, how are we going to do this? And I said, yes, we need to answer that question. Like, I'm, I'm fully here, like, uh, I'm acceptable towards the idea of anarcho-capitalism. I just need you to explain to me two things, right? Like, how do we achieve that? And how do we maintain that so that it doesn't turn into, like, capitalism we have today, right? Like, how do I not, like, exchange the government that we have now for some sort of private corporation-based government, right? Like, because if, if at some point I'm able to have private military, private police, and private, um, like, firefighters and private healthcare and everything is private and ho held by one company, well, that's generally like how we perceive government, right? So, yeah, so uh, how do we, like, how do we achieve, uh, uh, how do we get to the point where we block any single person from, you know, becoming a private, you know, president of a private state? So the creation of a monopoly is almost entirely, well, I would actually say entirely dependent on the existence of a state, because without a state, it cannot pass legislation, which is viewed by the people as legitimate and justified, and so they will not oppose it. Uh, meanwhile, they do not have the same attitude towards corporations, uh, which they do not view, uh, if they were to like pass their own legislation and start acting like a government, uh, they would not view that as legitimate. But we have many cases in which no legislations were passed, but monopoly was achieved. For example, the way that you know oil was distributed in uh, United States at the beginning of uh, at, at, you know during the 19th century, right? With uh, the how do you, what's his name? Uh, the guy with all the oil who also bought all the uh, rain tracks. Yeah, and I know what you're talking about, but like. Um... Anybody, anybody knows, uh, knows the name of the guy? Yeah, so basically before the government intervened, he had a monopoly over all of the oil and over all of the drillings of the oil and over, over the transfers of the oil, right? So he had basically the three industries in his hands before the government intervened, right? So there was no government uh, uh, intervention and the monopoly was achieved. So that beats your argument. All right. So I would ask, what evidence do you have that, like, if you can't find anything, that there was no um, legislation passed to aid in the formation of a monopoly, such as the excessive taxation of competitors and passing uh, certain legislation against their competitors to make it more difficult to compete? And as a result, um, having no choice but to sell out to uh, the monopoly that was then forming. Well, yeah, you have like many different. Uh, you know, uh, Rockefeller, that's the, the name of the guy, right? So you have like many different uh, documentaries in him and how he achieved it. Like, like government was at some point, you know, um, through police and through different kinds of like government bodies involved, right? But that's the thing, like, he basically, in most cases, paid for it, right? So, so what, what uh, what's the point with this? If, I'm, if I want to achieve monopoly, and I don't have a government, which is going to stop me by legislating against monopoly, what I can just do is 
with the money I have, I can bribe people to let me do that, right? So again, we got to the point where you know it, it's not the it's not the government, it's not the body, it's not the police. It's how much you can actually pay, you know, to control some assets that are going to allow you to do these kinds of things, right? So, so I I don't think that like government does play a role, but my argument is that government is actually playing a role by helping these people achieve this through some skill, but. If you get rid of the art, if you get rid of the uh, government, you're still going to have the power of the money, right? The power of the wealth, which is just going like it's going to allow me to buy people to stand in front of my factories and beat my workers to death if they don't work, right? Like, how do we stop these kinds of things without government? That's my question. All right, so. Trust bus legislation, which is the legislation that destroys monopolies and breaking them up into smaller corporations, um, you could argue that that is just other smaller companies getting together to buy out politicians so that they pass that certain legislation to get rid of their uh, nemesis, their threat that is threatening their business. Okay, I mean, we can we can stop that and analyze it, right? And what I would say is that okay, but th that solution is still a capitalist solution. My solution is to kill the capitalists, take over the production, and destroy all forms of consumership in as fast as possible, right? So we don't have a dichotomy between American government and anarcho capitalism, right? We have like many different options by which one, like I choose, you know, to violently, you know, kill all the capitalists and all wealthy people and just yeah, take their money and distribute it and, you know, organize people to work as they want, for example. Right? Like, mm -hmm. like I, can, I can think of like five many different cases. I, I don't have like a standpoint which is unmovable here, right? Be because you're, you're, proposing that anarcho-capitalism is is the solution right so so we can choose any different other point of view to challenge the idea of how do we control monopolies right but what you need to provide is a bulletproof example of how do we do this in anarcho-capitalism how do we stop monopolies in anarcho-capitalism not how you know current capitalist government fails i know it fails i agree all right all right so in anarcho-capitalism, the means for mass oppression in a government would be probably evenly distributed because they would all be sold off in the private sector. Nobody would have enough money to buy, out, buy it all. And even if they did, awesome. then, even if they did. That's an awesome point, right? Like we will all have a plain field to play with, right? And I agree with you, right? If we would to just start with the even field, it would be awesome, right? And that's what cap like uh, anarcho syndicalists are saying, right? We if we all start with an even field and have like, you know, we still can have, uh, uh, um, you know, the labor movements and the the market, right? But how do we achieve that? Because in the status quo, we already have really rich people who are just going to buy off everything before you step into anarcho-capitalism, right? So how do we stop these people who have all this wealth and these corporations that have all this wealth and all of these clubs and, you know, all of these kings and all of these lords and whatever who have all of this wealth, how are we going to distribute that in a way in which we're going to assure that we have a plain even field? That's the question. Well, the only way they can maintain all of that wealth is through government sanction, specifically because people view the government as legitimate and so are less likely to interfere with its actions versus uh, corporation actions. And since the corporations are protected by government in many cases, that it prevents it from altogether. And once you get rid of the government, then the people have the responsibility to um, make their purchases consciously and support those companies which are in their own interest. 
but again, you're talking about it like we can all just say, hey, government doesn't exist anymore, and we just poof, don't have any government, right? There are many different things that you need to do to destroy government, right? Like the most thought through theory is a communist theory, right? That you first need to take over the government, right? With your own people and then control it and then destroy it after many decades of, you know, completely changing the way that we produce stuff, right? And they have really, you know, complicated theory. The biggest experiment of this theory was the Soviet Union that lasted for like, you know, 20, 30 years, depends on who you ask. And they failed, right? L like, how do you prove to me if I was to, if I were to vote for you as the president of Earth, right? How do you prove to me that you are going to achieve this? What are your steps to achieving the destruction of the government? And how is this government going to dismantle in a way in which we are sure that nobody's going to use this particular situation to get into position of power, right? Well, trying to solve government through way of government would just be perpetuating the issue of people believing in government as a legitimate force to solve problems. But you're still not answering my question. How do we achieve anarcho-capitalism? How? Okay. What are the steps? Steps step one, step two, step three, and then we can analyze if it's viable. All right. So one possible approach would be through cryptocurrency, specifically because it undermines the value of those currencies that are circulated by governments. And and what what okay, so I am United States of America and I can see that cryptocurrencies are you know destroying my economy and I just ban them. What? Well it's it's not really possible to control them because they're not in uh any sort of um like they're not stored all in one place. They're not owned by just a few companies. Like Bitcoin is a look. I understand how cryptocurrencies work, but you do realize that they are banned and strictly controlled in some countries, like country in, in which I am living in, Serbia. You can't buy or sell cryptocurrencies legally without firstly registering yourself with your ID card. Right. Like it's it's illegal to do that. Right. And if you start doing that without first and foremost, you know, converting it into into usable currency, uh, you're basically just going to like waste your time. Right. And that's the problem, because first, if I'm just going to be reliant on cryptocurrencies at some point, you know, I'm just going to lose a lot of money because cryptocurrencies are pretty much, well, unreliable because their value is jumping and, you know, going down from day to day so you need to make a case in which we are all going to agree that cryptocurrencies are completely fine we are all going to like start using them even the people who don't have enough money to you know own or teach themselves how to use the technology and the third thing is that you need to say that government is going to just allow their people to use cryptocurrencies and not pay taxes right? which is not just not going to happen they're just going to start you know controlling the internet as a whole, right? Like they are doing in Russia, for example. So that's the problem, right? Like, how are you going to stop the government from intervening in your revolution? And if, if, you, if you just like, if you answer that question, right, you're just going to, you know, go into the, you know, basically communist theory, right? And, and anarchist theory as a whole, like, how do we start a revolution, right? And then you're going to go into, you know, historical materialism and all of these things. But before we go into that, I need you to answer me how is, you know, sci-fi dystopian, you know, American imperialism, you know, not going to stop your little cryptocurrency revolution? Yeah, I'm, I'm not claiming that I have a good plan to actually attain anarcho-capitalism like i'm not making that assertion whatsoever but what i am saying is that it is a superior model uh, for society to live in 
and then I could get kicked out the 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 chair down. Oh, I, I can't hear him anymore. Epicur, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. All right, good. So, so what's your plan? How, how are we going to stop the government from, you know, shutting down the internet? Or blocking all of the wallets by passing a law that's going to put a software on your phone and computer that's going to block all evil or anything like that, really, like... We're, we're, we're in this position, you know, people who are using internet are in this position that, you know, they're, they're doing all, everything safely and, you know, but like in general, like nothing is stopping government from passing a law, which is just going to allow them to get into your house and put the USB stick in your computer. Like, and if, they're, if they put this kind of a law, you're just going to operate illegally. And you have to make a case that, you know, at least like 80% of people are just going to start operating completely illegally and start building, you know, their evolution internally. But at the end of the day, how is that going to attack the government? Because government at any point can just, you know, send their military or paramilitary troops to go into your house and kill you. Yeah. I mean, look at what happened to during 60s and 70s in, in, uh, in the United States, right? All of these movements, you know, like many black people got killed, many white people got killed. Uh, they passed I'm not claiming to... Homes, like. Yeah, I'm not claiming to have a good plan or really any plan at all. All I'm saying is that anarcho-capitalism is a superior model of society. Again, I can, I can set any particular plan. For, like, I can say that Let's let just assume that a model in which you have only 100 people on Earth is going to be the superior model, right? And we are all agree on that. But how do we achieve that, right? Like, how do I get to that point? That's the political, the, the political theory that has to be discussed. Because whatever I say, I can't prove that this something like this system, political system, is achievable, right? Like, I need you to explain how is anarcho capitalism achievable. Like, what what do I what do I personally have to do? To achieve anarcho capitalism, right? And what do everybody what does everybody else has to do to achieve anarcho capitalism? And what do all of we like all of us, what do we do to maintain it anarcho and not just capitalism, right? Like those are the three questions that you need to answer in this debate. Because without that, we just don't have debate. We just have like, oh my idea is better than yours because you know theoretically and 1,000 years, you know, cryptocurrencies are just going to be... Like, no, we, we don't have that debate. Like, leftists in general knew this because, like, we, we had leftist theory for, like, 150 years, 200 years now. You know, where, where, where people were just, like, you know, shouting ideas at each other and, and that's why we have, like, 100 leftist positions at this point, which are all explaining how do we actually achieve anarchism? How do we actually achieve communism? And then you have, like... 50 different splits and left is never going to unite because there's 50 different splits of 50 different explanations what we need to do to the guest to this point, right? But we all agree on some basic idea, right? You can just come up with that idea. We can all just say, yeah, good, nice idea, but how do we get there, right? Like, what are the steps? Without that, we basically don't have any debate, right? We're just like shouting what, what idea is better. Like, I can agree with you, right? I can agree with you that Anarcho... Uh, uh, capitalism is a great, awesome system, you know, it works perfectly when it's achieved, you know, all of it's great, right? But how do we achieve that is the political problem. And now I'm just repeating myself, so I'm just going to stop here. Well, one way of doing it is creating infrastructure without the state's regulation or the state's knowledge. So having like a, just like on a small scale kind of thing, you could have like a roadside farm thing that isn't being yep. taxed. And so that subverts it somewhat. Just stop you there. French Revolution start, uh, like the, the second French Revolution in like Paris Commune started that way, they killed them all. Uh, Germany, before Second World War, they started doing it, they killed them all. In um in like literally like government sent troops and they literally killed 
hundreds of people that try to you know make their cities in a well, I said right without now, you have knowledge. One, what? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said last. Oh, I said without their knowledge. So the government wouldn't know about it to begin with. So you're going to have like some super duper secret society that's going to like do infrastructure secretly? You do realize that we have like surveillance that it's like beyond our comprehension. Like we literally have satellites looking at our cities 24 seven. Like we can detect like uh, new new concentration camps in China, like in rural parts of China and how they develop over years. How are you going to achieve infrastructure of, of revolution without anybody noticing that, right? Like you can't even make an atomic, like uh, a shelter without doing, like you can dig a hole, like look in, in, in Serbia, uh, they have planes that are circling the whole country every five years. If they see one little object that is built in your backyard that you haven't registered, there's going to be a, a court decision to for you to either you know destroy it or pay for uh, the construction of it. Right. So you have a surveillance of anything that's happening on the earth and possibly underneath the earth if you're just not going to like dig you know through the basements of you know houses. But then we're just going into like Okay, so so or anarchy, all anarchists are going to move, literally living like under earth. Like, how do we achieve this? Or are you just like going to build under the sea? But even that is like observable through satellites. So I don't know how how, how are you going to do this? So every interaction that occurs without the state's knowledge or intervention and intervention is what we could call the counter economy. And it subvert every transaction that occurs within the counter economy subverts the strength of the state. Because that is one more transaction they can't tax and regulate. Yeah, now I get what you're saying. And there's there's one uh, particular type of people that actually do this right now in the whole world. They're called uh, 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 illegal drug trade, right? It's happening all over the, all over the fucking world, right? And uh, there's a lot of us who actually enjoy drugs, right? Uh, using them, buying them, selling them, whatever. But, you know, from time to time, there's, you know, like government is intervening by just, you know, uh, observing it through spies, through, you know, listening to your phone, through other people panicking and then telling other people and things like that. So, yeah, we already have that and it's not working. What do you mean the drug trade isn't working? I mean, it's one, it's a gigantic industry. Yeah, and that's why the government is at this point and basically for the last, like from the opium trades, right? It's intervening in it because it sees that there's a potential in it, right? So as soon as you start being detected, like first moment you are detected by the government or somebody who is working for the government, it's going to be exposed. How are you going to keep it not exposed? Are you just going to be like, like believe everyone who is interacting with you that they share the same plan as you are? Because just one single mistake in the span of few months is going to cost all of your drug trade to, you know, be at some point controlled by government because they're just going to start listening to you. I don't know if you have actually engaged in drug trade, at but it's super fucking complicated because at some point you're going to get into a person that has actually been arrested or has actually, you know, been working with the police or anything like that. So it's like basically like at this point, I know at least 10 people who have actively interacted with the police. Uh, to either buy drugs from police themselves or to uh, report on someone who has been dealing drugs to, to, for them personally to not go to prison, right? So how do you do that? All right, so... Just look at the Silk Road, right? Like Silk Road fell after, what, three years of full operation, two years of full operation, something like that, right? 
And Silk Road is basically that. It's cryptocurrency plus drugs. And it failed. Yeah, like, I, I don't know of any good methods that would, you know, not fail because I'm just not that well educated on that particular matter. Well, then, then we, then we don't have like, I think the debate about, right? Like, because we are searching for any specific market in the history that we know that has worked so that we can actually have this model implemented. And I personally don't know about any single model that hasn't been connected to the government at some point, right? If you can provide that, we can use that as a model and then see later on how can that be developed into, um, into a secret route that is going to, you know, completely, you know, eradicate the government. Because before we actually prove that, it's just fairy tales, right? It's just like empty speak about, you know, how are we going to achieve this? Yeah, I'll look into it. Like right now, or like should should I wait for you? Or no, I'm looking. Uh, yeah, I'm looking into it right now, but I might not find an answer for a little while. So yeah, because I I sincerely think there is no one. Like, is there anybody else in the room that can actually answer this question? Who who also believes that? You know, you don't even have to believe that hierarchical capitalism is achievable or whatever. We just have to, like, think about it as, you know, um, as any point in, you know, history of economy that this has been achieved and then, you know, controlled and kept secret at some point. Like, we're not talking about the Illuminati shit, right? Like, because Illuminati and, you know, Matt Masons, they, they are basically connected to the government. They have always been connected to the government. Like I have some friends who, whose you know, like uncles are part of masonry, so I have the like secondhand information about this. But like, I don't see at any point where this has been achieved in history, and you know, one instance. observation, uh, one observation I would make is that the Silk Road was big enough and powerful enough and a, a, a threat to government enough that they actually uh, took great efforts to shut it down. And so that in itself shows how it is a threat to government and yeah, yeah. subverts its I, I existence. Understand. Look, I understand it's a threat to government, right? Like Black Panthers, like all of these revolutionary, any revolutionary organization ever had some sort of, you know, economy model to you know finance themselves enough so they can actually at some point buy guns and ammunition to fight the government firsthand right but they have always failed at some point if they haven't actually achieved their revolution like for example lenin did in soviet russia right like they they managed to get enough money and manpower to actually start a revolution right but this is the thing right they started the revolution by telling to everyone that, you know, they're going to control their lives by controlling their means of production and all of these things. But if I come to people and say, look, we're going to make capitalism even better by, you know, removing all of the government, like we're just going to remove all of your rights to, you know, um, you know, to, to free health care, to all of these things. But like America doesn't have that. So I don't know, like you, you guys are weird. Uh, but like, like, how are you going to explain to people that, you know, even after all of this, even if we, let's suppose that we have actually achieved this, right? We have enough money to, you know, fight the government and we defeat the government. And then we have 180 more governments to fight against, right? Like, this is the thing. At some point, you need to take over the whole imperialistic, you know, machinery and start doing imperialism you know, like at a maximum to defeat all of the other government, right? And then after you do that, you're going to have 
more profiteers. You're going to have all of these different things that come after war, which are like horrible, right? And to fight the war, you actually have to be pretty fucking corrupted, right? Like you have to, at some point, work with people that are against you because there's a lot of people who are against you, right? Like I personally am against you, right? So we have to make deals, right? Like Soviet Russia did deals, like Yugoslavia did deals with people who they fight against, right? Like if you look at the Yugoslavian army, um, at some point they were financed by the British, then they were financed by the Soviet Russia, right? Because they needed guns, they needed ammunition, they, they needed all of these things. And they were literally working with a capitalist, you know, kingdom of United Kingdom, you know, who was giving money to communists to fight against Nazis, right? But at some point they started asking for that money to be given back. And Yugoslavia couldn't fight United Kingdom because United Kingdom was bigger than Yugoslavia at any point. So they had to lean back to Russia. And then Russia was corrupted. And then then they said no to both of them. And then they actually didn't say no to both of them because they worked on a small scale, you know, fighting through the old war by sitting on two chairs at the same time. Like it's super fucking complicated to actually achieve any form of independence from other governments, right? And what you personally need to do is defeat all of them, right? So, so war is a pretty complicated topic, right? Like, it's pretty complicated to fight any, any, any sort of war. And even before we get to the war, we need to, like, pursue and, like, tell people how are we going to achieve everything to be great after the war. And this just doesn't seem to be doable to me through the theory of anarcho-capitalism because anarcho-capitalism doesn't answer all of these questions of how do we actually achieve that right in that matter the theories such as you know communist theory and uh, like any basically socialist theory is going to be more viable because it's pretty much more realistic like what do you do to achieve socialism well you create unions you take over the unions and you just bring thousands of people on the street and stop uh, stop the government from working for a few days, and then you have enough time to get into the into the government, kill the people who are, you know, inside of the government and take it over, and then you will fight the war with our governments. And that part has not yet been uh, like achieved to this point in time. Right. So my question again is, how do we? do this like how what are the steps to building anarcho capitalism in a way in which it won't eat itself alive once the war profiteers are you know powerful enough to stop you right to, to get like super capitalist and then you just get like super dystopian societies where companies are running the world which doesn't seem good to me because Companies are certainly not going to take care over animals. They're not going to take any care. Yeah, I can I can explain like all of the nuances of a anarcho capitalist society, but it seems like you're more interested in like how do you actually get there rather than um you know what would happen once you're there. 